This is an ABP Life podcast. So, the people of Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh and Delhi celebrated the festival of democracy. Himachal and Gujarat had its state elections while the people of Delhi voted in the municipal elections. Now, I personally voted for the first time last year. Well, if you remember, last year was the assembly elections in West Bengal in which Trinamool Congress had a landslide victory. Let's not get into the nitty-gritties of it, but last year's election was special because it was the first time I had cast my vote as a citizen of this country. But the one thing that intrigued me the most was the machine I pressed to cast my vote, the electronic voting machine, popularly known as EVM. Until that point, I had only heard about EVM, how controversial machine it was. You know, I find a very peculiar similarity between EVM and my mobile phone. Well, after every elections, some political party or the other says that EVM is responsible for their loss. And after my exam results, my mother says my mobile phone is responsible for my loss. Either ways, both these machines are very controversial in its own rights. Well, jokes apart. India has been using EVMs for a long time now. But it still continues to be a controversial machine, a flawed machine, not according to me, huh? But by the political parties who lose the elections. I remember watching news debates where politicians say that Indian polity needs to get rid of electronic voting machines because they're not accurate. They can be tampered. They're not reliable. But is this really the case? Well, I know India is one of the few countries who still uses EVMs, whereas many countries use ballot papers for casting vote. So, have you ever thought how accurate electronic voting machines really are? Why was it introduced in India in the first place? How many countries still use EVMs and how many countries have done away with this practice? Let's decode all of this today. So welcome to Clear Cut only on ABP Live podcasts. This is your newsman Rudrashish and today let's talk about electronic voting machines. So let's get started. So first let's talk about the history of EVMs in India. Why was it introduced? When was it introduced? Now India used paper ballots till the 1990s. The sheer scale of the Indian elections with more than half a billion people eligible to vote combined with election related criminal activity led Indian election authority and high courts to transition to electronic voting. Booth capturing was a very big problem back then. For those of you who don't know, booth capturing means party loyalists, criminal gangs and musclemen entering the booth with force in villages and remote areas and stuffing the ballot boxes with pre-filled peg paper ballots. This problem grew between the 1950s and 1980s and became a serious and large-scale problem in states such as Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, later spread into Andhra Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir and West Bengal. Another logistical problem was the printing of paper ballots, transporting and safely storing them and physically counting hundreds of millions of votes the election commission of india wanted a solution to all these problems by developing an electronic voting machine the first use of evms occurred in the general elections in kerala in may 1982 however the absence of a specific law prescribing its use led to the supreme court striking down that election then in 1989 The parliament amended the Representation of the People Act 1951 to create a provision for the use of EVMs in the elections. A general consensus on its introduction could be reached only in 1998 and EVMs were used in 25 legislative assembly constituencies spread across three states of Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Delhi. It was further expanded to parliamentary and assembly elections in 1999. and 2000 and since then the evms have been in regular use in india now did you know that an evm consists of two units a control unit and the balloting unit 
The balloting unit is basically the one which voters use. I mean, the unit which facilitates voting by a voter. We are labeled buttons. The control unit controls the ballot units, stores voting counts, and displays the results on seven segment LED displays. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Now, speaking of advantages of EVMs, when EVMs were first purchased, it came around for rupees five thousand five hundred, which is equivalent to fifty thousand rupees in twenty twenty. At the time the machines were purchased, it was really expensive. I'm talking about nineteen eighty nine to ninety. Even though the initial investment was heavy, it has since been expected to save costs of production and printing of crores of ballot papers, the transportation and storage, substantial reduction in the counting staff, and the remuneration paid to them. For each national elections, it is estimated that about ten thousand tons of ballot paper is saved. EVMs are easier to transport compared to ballot boxes, as they are lighter, more portable, and comes with a carrying case. Vote counting is also faster. In places where literacy is a factor, illiterate people find EVMs easier than ballot paper systems. Bogus voting is greatly reduced as the vote is recorded only once. Now, in spite of being a very useful machine, there's still controversy surrounding it. Some political parties often allege it that EVMs can be tampered and manipulated. Many political parties want the reintroduction of the ballot paper system of voting. Now, these allegations cannot be just thrown out of the window because many countries around the world have banned the use of EVMs. Countries like England, France, Germany, the Netherlands and the United States have banned the use of EVMs. However, in the US, people can electronically vote via email or fax. Now, on the other hand, Countries that use EVMs are Belgium, Estonia, Venezuela, United Arab Emirates, Jordan, Maldives, Namibia, Egypt and Bhutan. As a matter of fact, Nepal, Bhutan, Namibia and Kenya have purchased Indian manufactured EVMs. As a matter of fact, in 2013, the Election Commission of Namibia acquired 1700 control units and 3500 ballot units. Several other Asian and African countries are reportedly interested in using them as well. So if I had to weigh in on this EVM debate, I would say that electronic voting machines are okay. They're quite reliable, and I don't see any hassle or any debate over this. It saves tons of paper, and it's easy to use for everyone. And now to speak further on this, we have psychologist Mr. Sanjay Kumar joining us on the show today. So welcome to Clear Cut sir it's a pleasure to have you on the show again thank you so sir as we are talking about EVM electronic voting machines today and uh, Gujarat Himachal Pradesh had its election Delhi municipal elections were held uh, so do you think that uh, even after three decades EVMs remain a controversial machine in the Indian polity uh, i won't say that it has become a controversial machine or it has remained a controversial machine i think the controversies are only at the time of election it's more about politics hmm. uh, if we have to if we have to look at from people's point of view i don't think that the people of this country the voters of this country have huge dissatisfaction or suspicion about evm hmm. yes there are a little bit of anxieties if we, if i compare trust of the people in evm or hmm. trust of political parties in the evm over hmm. last a decade yes there is a, a slight dip but i think overall evms are acceptable everybody finally accepts the results so mm. it's more about politics than uh, anything substantial about strong reservation about use of evms in indian elections mm-hmm. now so evms were introduced in india because um, a big reason was booth capturing by party loyalists muscle men uh, do you think in today's day and age where security is very tight during the elections do you think mm. booth capturing still remains a problem See, when we say booth capturing, we use booth capturing word in a very loose manner. There mm. are different ways of capturing booth, and I disagree that EVMs were used mainly to prevent booth capturing. I think EVMs were introduced mainly to facilitate casting of vote and facilitate counting of vote, mm-hmm. making election process smoother, faster. Mm-hmm. Uh, because even with EVMs, you can rig elections. You can Uh, booth you can do booth capturing what is booth capturing booth capturing is a 
is a situation creating a situation where you know uh, people who are who are not who should not be voting in that booth hmm. uh, tend out uh, you know turn out to vote hmm. so hmm. even with evms this is possible in a different hmm. manner uh, earlier booth capturing used to mean you know people stamping the ballot paper and stuffing those ballot paper hmm. in the boxes hmm. now booth capturing would not mean uh, stamping the ballot paper and stuffing it in ballot boxes it would mean pressing the button at certain intervals uh, yes there are some certain technicalities involved hmm. but if there are people at the polling station whom you could influence whom you could mobilize whom you could put pressure hmm. uh, even with evms you can capture the booth hmm. so it's not that evms can prevent the entire booth capturing or evms were introduced only to uh, minimize booth capturing mainly it was introduced to help the process of conducting election making it much faster mm mm-hmm. mm mm-hmm. now so evms are banned in many countries in the west uh, but united states has a very different kind of electronic voting that is why you can vote by email or fax so yes. uh, do you think this system can be implemented in india as well uh so it's very fashionable to you know follow something which has which is being introduced in the west Mm-hmm. and when we are talking about us this is much more fashionable that if something is happening in us we must we as indian must follow that mm-hmm. yes uh in us people can vote through email or through fax i am mm-hmm. not saying that this can't happen in india this could this can also be practiced in india mm-hmm. that people can have the liberty to vote through fax or email mm-hmm. but i think this poses a serious question mark about the uh, the tra- the the secrecy of vote because if i if if somebody is emailing hmm. uh the vote we don't know who there would be there would be people who may be present around around that person who is casting the vote hmm. so and and that person could also be put under pressure theoretically i'm hmm. saying hmm. i'm not saying that it, this will always happen uh so this poses a question mark about the secrecy of vote hmm. yes this can be introduced nobody prevents uh the machinery which conducts selection in india from introducing vote by email by fax by whatsapp mm-hmm. by phone call there could be many other means mm mm-hmm. oh so sir thank you so much for joining us today it was a pleasure talking to you sir thank you thank you thank you very much thank you sir so that's all the news and scoops i have for you today this episode was produced by lalit this is your newsman rudrashish kanjilal signing off have a wonderful day ahead and keep listening to abp live podcasts This is an ABP Life podcast.